Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're back with another of our 5 Minute Histories videos. And today I'm standing on the shores of a 2400 acre, 23 billion gallon body of water that is of course Lock Raven Reservoir. If you live in Baltimore City or much of Baltimore County and you turn on your tap, the water that comes out starts here. But if we turn the clock back to say 1900, I would not be standing on the shores of an enormous reservoir, I'd be standing on Main Street in a mill town called Warren that dates back to a land grant from King George III in 1750. We're going to talk about uh, Lock Raven today and a little bit about the town of Warren, but have to first start with a sincere thank you to everybody who's contributed to Baltimore Heritage over the last several weeks. Many of you recently got a letter asking for support and many of you responded. Thank you so much. We are a small organization and gifts of all sizes literally uh, make these videos possible and all of our other work. So whether you have already contributed or are thinking of it. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's turn uh, to the uh, reservoir first and then uh, to the town. Um, the reservoir first started with a dam on the big gunpowder river in 18 in the early 1880s. Before then, Baltimore City had relied on the Jones Falls River for its drinking water uh, source. Uh, it supplied water to Lake Roland and the reservoir in Hamden that is no longer there. It's now the skate park. And then, of course, the reservoir in Druid Hill uh, Park. But in the 1880s, we needed more and cleaner drinking water, and so turned to the Big Gunpowder uh, River. Um, we dammed it up to supply not only Lake Roland and Company, but also Lake Montebello, which is still there. Its uh, pump house is still there doing its thing. And then uh, Lake Clifton, just down the street from Lake uh, Montebello. With the reservoir is no longer there, but if you drive through Clifton Park, you can see the wonderful uh, valve house from that period. So the dam started in the 1880s, and so did the name. When the water engineers went to name this new reservoir, they looked to Raven Rock, apparently a big rock high on a bluff above the new reservoir where ravens roost, um, and took the name Raven from there, but then kind of fancied it up a little bit. Instead of just saying uh, Raven Lake, uh, they chose a Celtic word, Lock. So now we have uh, Lock Raven uh, here uh, as the name. Um, and so it began supplying our drinking water uh, in the 1880s, but things really ramped up in 1908 with City Council Ordinance 141. That's when Baltimore City appropriated five million dollars to uh, to build a bigger dam. I think it went from something like 50 feet to almost 120 feet uh, to supply our drinking water. 1908, we were rebuilding after the devastating 1904 fire that uh, wiped out much of our downtown. We were determined to build bigger and better, including bigger and better drinking water and safe and cleaner drinking water uh, for Baltimore and its growing uh, population. Um, remarkably, the reservoir here uh, has almost the same capacity as when it started, 23 billion gallons. It has not silted up like many other reservoirs have, and that's due in part to the foresight of the engineers. They created uh, a series of settling pools upstream, so sediment would settle in there instead of in the reservoir. They're still doing uh, their work, and also to the the wonderful uh, ability of Baltimore County to prevent development from happening here, uh, to prevent impervious surfaces from uh, popping up and having uh, silt and runoff go directly into the reservoir. So uh, we have a wonderful uh, big drinking water system here in Baltimore today at Lock Raven, but it came at a cost, and the cost was the sacrifice of the town of Warren. Let's turn to that uh, for a second uh, right now. Um, Warren got its start in 1750 by a gentleman named Richard Britton, uh, a pioneer who came out to Baltimore County, got a land grant from King George III, and by 1760 had built a mill, a flour mill on the site. Uh, the success of the flour mill attracted some other early Baltimore County families, names, a couple names you might know, Harrymans, if you know Harriman House in Reisterstown, um, that's where that comes from, and then the Jessups, if you know the town of Jessup, uh, uh, south of Baltimore, um, that's where that name comes from. Uh, members of their family were out here in Warren with this flour mill. The uh, flour mills turned the flour mill turned to a textile mill in the 1800s. In 1820, uh, the town of Warren held a unique status in America. It apparently was the only mill where you could take a raw bowl of cotton and come out with a, a finished bolt of calico. Uh, so bragging rights for the town of Warren back in 1820. 
2020. The mill itself burned uh, several times, I think at least three times, but was rebuilt and eventually ended up producing cotton duck, uh, that sailcloth uh, that uh, much of Baltimore's mills were building as well. Um, the town itself was a thriving mill town. It had uh, 900 residents. It had 100 company-owned uh, houses, a company store, a couple churches, a school, eventually a movie house. Um, it, was a, it was a thriving place uh, from the 1800s up until uh, the 1920s when it was uh, buried under uh, the water that would become Lock Raven. After the uh, 1908 ordinance, when Baltimore City began to really, uh, in earnest, develop uh, uh, the, begin to build Lock Raven. The town was owned by a company called the Warren Manufacturing Company, and they apparently were eager to sell uh, to the town for eventual, eventual flooding. They even entered into a secret agreement with Baltimore City on the price, and when that became public and there was an uh, outcry against it, uh, the manufacturing company sued the city to try to enforce that, uh, that agreement. Um, eventually, in 1922, Baltimore City paid $1 million for both the town of Warren and the town of Phoenix. And four months later, the, uh, all of the residents of Warren had been moved uh, and work had begun on the dam. It apparently took, once the dam was completed in 1923, it took 50 days to fill up uh, to its current capacity of 23 uh, billion gallons. Um, if you are wondering what's left of the town of Warren, uh, likely not much. A few houses were moved before the flooding began and the, some of the big timbers from the mill itself but the rest of it was purposefully demolished and then moved away uh, to prevent it from clogging up the dam works. Um, everything except for a flagpole uh, pointedly left by the demolition crew that had sat in front of the schoolhouse, but apparently after a couple decades being submerged, it too uh, uh, rusted away. But I'll invite you to come on out, uh, take a walk along these gorgeous uh, shores and through the forest. Um, and if you do so, uh, maybe say a little thanks to the folks of Warren for sacrificing their town uh, for our clean drinking water supply today. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.